In any life, we have highs and lows, light and dark, wins and losses. What happens when we encounter that moment in time when what happens next could change everything? Join us as we step into another person's inspirational moment and see how we can connect their experience to ours. This is Greg Stevens, and you're listening to A Shot of Inspiration. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of A Shot of Inspiration. I'm Greg Stevens, your host, and today we have John and Melissa Reimer with us, and they are with the Victim to Warrior Organization. And they have a really interesting, I guess, mission is what I would call it, that they actually go out and help people who are in relationships with people who are narcissists and help them actually make the break away if they need to and what to do if they're in those circumstances. So, John, Melissa, thanks for being on the show today. Yes, great. Glad glad to be here. First off, what do you define as a narcissist? And How do people know if they are in a relationship with a narcissist or if they work for a narcissist? Because that tagline is thrown around so much and there truly are narcissists. But so many times we see someone, we just label them that way. Right. We want to make sure we're not doing that. So how do we find out if a person really is a narcissist? Some people can have narcissistic traits. It doesn't necessarily make them a narcissist. John and I came up with a questionnaire that we send to people when they're concerned with the person that they're with, because there's very distinctive behavioral changes. It could be an overt narcissist or it can be a covert narcissist, which is more introverted. But the problems with the narcissist is they are a chameleon. So when you first meet them, they're everything they think you want them to be. So it's basically they're mirroring what you think is important. It could be your religion. It could be your job. It could be your hobbies. They will lie about what is important to them. So it's matching what's important to you. So you feel like they're your soulmate. You feel like, my gosh, we have everything in common. That is actually a fake person. They are not really like that. And a narcissist can do that without any emotional attachment. They are doing it for a reason, either financial gain or Uh, your sphere of influence. It could be money. It could be that they want someone to take care of them. Lifestyle. Lifestyle, anything. But there's a reason they choose a victim. And and then, of course, they drain the life from that victim uh, like a vampire. But narcissists have absolutely no emotional feelings toward anything. They will just fake their way through it. And that's what's so hard for a victim because they fall in love with who they think this person is. And when the person's mask starts coming off little by little, you immediately think you're doing something wrong. So you try harder. Maybe I'm not cleaning the house well enough. Maybe the kids are loud. Anything and everything that aggravates the narcissist, your brain doesn't go to, oh, this person has a disorder. No, your brain is going to, I need to fix this relationship. I need to do better. I, I want what we had back. I want that fairy tale. I want that love and affection. That was all fake. And they will gradually take all of it from you until you lose all your confidence, your self-esteem, possibly all your money. They want financial control. They will talk you into putting your paycheck in a joint account and they'll drain it. The stories I hear from my clients are just atrocious. And what happened to me was atrocious. But that is the problem when you're with a narcissist. And there's very telltale signs. They are chronic liars. They exaggerate what they do. When they're out in public, they treat you so nicely most of the time. In private, they treat you horribly. So that personality swing back and forth, they will make you doubt your own sanity. If you call them out on something, I don't care if you have video about it, they will deny it happening. They will somehow reverse it, make it your fault that it happened, and then you're now defending yourself and apologizing and going, oh my gosh, I didn't realize I caused that. Total gaslighting. So there are very certain traits about narcissists. And what I tell people, if you're worried you're a narcissist, you're absolutely not a narcissist because a narcissist doesn't care. (laughs) 
They don't care. But to answer your interesting <laughs> question, Greg, it, it is hard. It is challenging to know, are these just traits or, or do they have certain uh, personality traits or are they a full-blown narcissist? Yeah. So Melissa and I created what we call the narcissist quiz. And basically it's a questionnaire. And you just go through the questions. There's about a page and a half of them. 15 questions. And, and 15 questions. And you and total the score up at the end. And you then are like, look, this is a narcissist. Yeah. And if that's the case, there is no fixing that person. Yeah. That's who they are. And so your decision at that point is, do I continue in this relationship? Do I continue in this life? Or do I make a break at this point? Yeah. Because I know it's not going to change. It's only going to get worse from that point. And it absolutely does. Right. It gets so much worse. It's the acceptance that they're with a narcissist. That's the hardest step for people to acknowledge. Even if they, like mine, you can... A score of 75 on this quiz we created. My ex narc was a 71. Okay. That is how know. horrible he was. But it took me seven years to get away from him. I have a lifetime restraining order against him. Wow. So you know? if you don't mind, I would like to hear a little of that story about how you came to that. What was the seven years like and what took you so long? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and also, I want to really dive in as you're sharing this. You really talked about something. We start to doubt ourselves if uh -huh. we're in this. And I've learned that with almost anything. If we're raised very differently, it looks different when you get into a relationship with someone. There's a book, Why We Love. Everyone has a different background about how we think life should go. But how is it different with a narcissist rather than just a regular couple unco uncovering some of that? Everybody has problems. With a normal relationship, if, if both parties want the relationship to work and there's a problem that arises, whether it's one person's fault or the other, you try to work toward a compromise. You might not, you know, agree fully on it, but you actually want to work on that relationship. You want to work on the problem. You want to work on maybe it's communication. There's different things. John and I had to work through things because we both were with narcissists in our previous life. So we had trust issues. So there's working through things because you want to. A narcissist, if you go to counseling with a narcissist, they will lie to that counselor. And most of the time, the counselor will believe them. They only want to be right. They don't want to look bad. They don't want to accept responsibility. They don't want to apologize and they don't want to change. So there is no compromising with a narcissist ever. You are the one that has to compromise everything. They will compromise nothing. One of the things that we do on our social media channels, Greg, is we do reenactments because yes. Melissa said we both have survived those relationships. So we do reenactments. And one of the ones that did so well, we've got videos that have been seen millions of times because people just, when they see this, they're like, oh my gosh, how did you get in my house? How did yeah. you know what was going on in my home? Yeah. But one of them is going to a totally therapy with a narcissist. Now, of course, I play the narcissist in this part, but it's pretty funny to see a narcissist in counseling because they don't do what they said they were going to do to get you to go to counseling or agreed to go to counseling. And so there is no fixing a narcissist, but it is pretty funny to see them in therapy because they're, they're not fixable. No, and they'll lie. And because they've agreed to go to therapy, you as the victim think, oh, thank goodness, a professional is going to tell them they have issues. It's not just me. So when you go into therapy, they start lying. Then you're thinking they're going to tell the truth. You get upset because they're lying. So you're now accusing them of lying. You're getting upset. You're getting all worked up and they're so calm. So you look like the crazy one. You it look is. like the one with the problems. And then yeah. it's, yeah. And if it re goes reverse and the, if the therapist calls them out on it, that therapist is horrible. They're not qualified. We're never going back to that therapist. Right. You also said something earlier. The narcissist isn't emotional, but they mm -hmm. do show emotion behind the Faith. scenes, right? Yeah. Right. Yes, they yeah. definitely with when it helps raging. Them, yeah. So when it helps them achieve their goals. Yeah. 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 Or if you've embarrassed them, they will fake emotions. They will absolutely fake emotions to get attention. John's was a covert. So she would fake all kinds of things because she wanted to be the victim. So she wanted that 
victim sympathy. I have hesitation. never seen anybody that could cry at the drop of a hat. And then if you're having a discussion or tried to, or you're having an argument, you're trying to get your point across and she starts crying. It's for men. It's, oh my gosh, I got to put her out. I got to get her to stop crying. So, you know, I'm not going to try to get my point across. Let me just agree. Let me get, so it, it, we all, we, we say narcissists are the master manipulators right. because they are the best at manipulating you yes. in any situation with emotions or with gaslighting or whatever they, whatever tactic they use. Um, it is designed to manipulate you yes. into thinking that you're wrong. They, and, the, and the problem with the regular person who's going through this, when they think they've reached their complete wits end, the narcissist, if they're not ready to discard you, if they still are getting something from you, then they will all of a sudden love bomb you. It, that's one of the words. They will hoover you back into that by telling you all the things that are upsetting you about the relationship. All of a sudden, they're willing to work on all of it. They're willing to do this. They're willing to go to there. They'll go to church with you. I'll, you know, I'll go to the sports events with the kids with you. It's all lies. Mm -hmm. They want you to come back. So you do. And then it's completely worse because after a week or two, they'll completely stop doing any of that. And now they're going to punish you for daring to leave them. So yeah, you mentioned that, Greg, why did it take so long to leave? That's part of the mm -hmm. problem for all of us as victims and survivors is we do go back over and over yeah. because we're hoping yeah. that it's going to go back to the way it was before. Right. And we believe their lies. And we have a whole series, oh, series uh, in, in that in our social media channels. Don't believe your, nar your narcissist lies because they are, that's, yeah. they're just master manipulators, like I said. So I, I encourage uh, it, it, your, your audience taking the quiz if they have any questions, but also check out our social media channels because we do series we do skits where we show narc lives or what How love bomb ruin events yeah ruin all the events what love bombing looks life. like what duvering yeah. looks like so that they can say oh my gosh i'm not crazy this is happening in my house now i understand what it is yeah. so we really encourage people to check out our social media and really try to understand what's going on in your life and that it's not you you're not the problem even though you you've been told you're the problem you've been told you're the narcissist and people get really upset about it because they're like, maybe it is me. Maybe. When you think it is you and you're worried about it being you, it's not you. Because a narcissist would never feel that way. They would never, because they don't think anything they do is wrong. They think they're right. They're superior. They're smarter. They're more clever. And they will never be held accountable for anything that they do. I don't care how bad it is. It's interesting because I work with people to try to take responsibility for their lives and themselves. And. I can't change the narcissist. No. I can't change myself. So what I'm going to say to the audience, and this is probably something, Melissa, both you and John have experienced as you did this. I have a quote that I live my life by. Everything in my life I create, promote, or allow. Mm -hmm. Everything. And if you're listening and you find you're in that space, the question is, what are you going to allow now? I think part of this is as... The person waking up in it who is not that the narcissist, well, how right. are they going to reclaim that power back in their life rather than giving it to someone else who is never destined to have that power anyway? But we tend to acquiesce because we understand we need a sacrifice for the relationship. There's a lot of things going on. And I feel like a part of people being able to separate is understanding themselves in a right. deeper way. So share with us how you came to that realization, took responsibility and moved forward. Because I I'm going to suggest this until you understand what you're in, you probably are yeah. a bit around. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. The moment you see it, then you can do something about it. And yeah. you can't do it until you see it. So I want to empower our listeners to say, you know what? I can do something about this now. There's help out there. There's people who yeah. understand me. So walk us through, Melissa, how you came to that realization and how you help people with that today. Once you realize there's something seriously wrong with the person that you're with, it's normally too late for you to just say, you know what, I'm going to leave because you're married to them. You may have children with them. You may have given up your financial 
freedom with them. So now it's a money controls everything. And that's one of the things that narcissists will do is financially abuse the victim because you can't leave if you don't have money. And that is, they know that. So the isolation, isolating you from your family, um, it, it's very, it's a very gradual situation, that cycle of abuse. And we talk about that a lot in our, uh, in, in my coaching sessions with people, because it starts out so beautiful. And then when things start going bad, your mind's like trying to fix it. And then it's a blow up. And then you're desperate. And you're like, I'm going to leave. And then all of a sudden, something good happens. So you never get off the hamster wheel. In my situation, I met him in church, divorce recovery. He was still married. I had no idea. He was still married and living with his wife, but she wanted a divorce. So now he was looking for his next victim, basically, uh, which was me. And so we knew each other a year. We dated six months. We were engaged a year. Six months after we got married, everything changed. All of a sudden, he was starting to pick on how long I worked, my hours. He was I talking to? Why am I? He was he put a tracker on me. I had no idea these things were happening. And I had a teenage son from my prior marriage, and he was awful to him, seriously abusive to him. But because my ex treated me like a princess up until six months after we got married, my son didn't want to ruin it for me because I had a heartbreaking divorce and he thought I was happy and that he was the one messing things up. So he was suffering in silence. He wasn't saying anything and even transferred out of state to another college so he could get out of that toxic environment, which left me alone with the narcissist. So I became the new victim. I became the punching bag. I became the one he was financially abusing. He created fake businesses. I had to be exonerated by the IRS. He had people looking for him. It it was awful. He stole from banks. He he created a huge company behind my back in my name. The bank I worked for actually. What claimed her home into his name? Yeah, during our divorce. Just unbelievable. uh, uh, Yeah. But that's what they do. They strip everything from you. But what John tells people is the wars start when you realize I'm getting out of this. So when I told him, I'll never forget it. I said, I can't handle this anymore. I don't know who you are. I cannot live this way anymore. And, And horrible things had happened prior to this. Horrible. And he started laughing. And he said, fine. Now we're in my house that I own. I bought my mortgage. He said, fine, pack your bags and leave. And I said, this is my house. I'm not leaving. And he said, I don't want a divorce. He said, so if you want a divorce, you need to be the one to leave. And of course, where we live, if I had left, that would have been abandonment, which could have caused all kinds of legal problems for me. So unfortunately, this escalated into a violent situation where the police were called. He actually called them on me. And said, I was trying to kill him with a knife, but it was actually him. And fortunately, after four hours, the police believed me over him and he was arrested and I was able to get a restraining order. That is when I started. I have to have legal. I got to get a divorce. I got to go see an attorney. Um, That that was her threshold. And and as humans, we all have thresholds where we we just can't take it anymore. And and when you reach that threshold, that's when really educating yourself becomes very important. What exactly are you dealing with? And once you know that and you want to leave, how do you do that safely yes. and so that you never go back? And so Melissa and I created what's called the 12 critical steps to take before you leave. It's when you go on vacation, going outside the country or something like that. You have a whole list of things you have to do before you. I got to get check my passport, get my dry cleaning, pack my bags, get, take the dogs to the kennels, whatever it is. You've got your list. Same thing here. You have got that have that critical list of things, create the emergency fund, set up an account at a different bank, check for tracking devices, copies of all your legal documents. So it's really important yeah, yeah. that you can't just leave. No. You have to have a those safe, that exit, safe exit, exit strategy, exit. right? Yep. And then again, most people go back the first time they leave, which is really a horrible situation because it's just going to be even worse. And then it's going to be harder to leave next time. If you really set yourself up for success, yeah. And I think it takes a lot of the emotion and the stress out of it too. If you're working a plan, I've got a date set in the future, two months in the future, six weeks or whatever. I got to take care of all these 12 steps. And once I do, 
I know I can leave safely and I'm not going to go back. And so that's really an important thing. If you're planning on leaving or once you realize you leave, you've got to do it smart. The, the biggest mistake is telling your NARC right. that you are leaving them or you are going to divorce them before you do those critical steps. I, I learned the hard way. And that's why I knew let's back it up. Don't make my mistake. This is what you've got to do. And we tell them, don't even say anything. Just have the safe place to go and let them be served with the papers because there is no, none of this with a narcissist. They will either turn on you like mine did, um, or they'll try to lug bomb you and make you change your mind. So you have to have the plan first. Don't hand over your playbook to the enemy. You've got to have it. And then you leave and then they're notified and people, you know, think, oh my gosh, when you're dealing with the narcissist, that's the only safe way to do it. Wow. And so. Thank you for sharing with us how you went through that. John, how was yours any different or is it exactly the same as Melissa? Mine was very different. Mine happened probably about 10 years before Melissa's. This was in the early 2000s, probably 2005, 2006. And we didn't know what a female narcissist was back then. We had no idea. We, we have Johnny Depp to thank yeah. uh, for bringing female narcissism mm -hmm. to the forefront, really, because we see Seriously. what someone like Amber Heard, beautiful woman, um, talented. successful, talented, can actually put a man through, a man like Johnny Depp. And, and if a woman could put Johnny Depp through something like that, it's possible that any man could suffer through it from an art, a female narcissist. But, but mine, mine was very emotionally controlling and also financially abusive. Now, uh, my marriage lasted only uh, half a year. We were together for five years before we got married, which that's we a sign. back and forth. Yeah, broke up. But the problem with me is I ignored the red flags. I was at a point in my life where I wanted to get married. I wanted to have kids. I thought this was the woman. Uh, she was beautiful. She was worked very hard. She was smart. I thought, I'll make this work. I'll ignore these things. And we have a whole, every Friday, we put a video out going Red Flag Friday. Yeah. And it's how, what red flags look like. And don't ignore them like I did and Melissa did. I, I did more uh, because Melissa, I don't think, had the red flags like I did. And so I ignored those red flags, got married anyway. And then the moment we were married, literally within a couple of weeks, I'm like, what have I done? Because she didn't have to wear the mask anymore. She could be the person that she truly was. Even her family warned me about her. Family, friends warned me about her. And I ignored it, Greg, to my own peril. And then when I said, listen, I think we've made a mistake. I think we just, I think we need to get a divorce. You go your way, I'll go mine. Like we always say. When you say that, that's when the war really begins. The smear campaign starts. She told all my friends and family that I was abusing her. That's why we were getting divorced, that she wanted the divorce. She actually almost had me arrested. When the police showed up at the house, I actually called them because she was going insane in the house. And when the police got there, tried, yeah, she, she rubbed her neck, had yeah. rubbed her neck all red and said that I had been strangling her, which is a felony. Obviously, you can go to jail for that. Fortunately, like Melissa said, I was very calm when she was in the same similar situation and he realized what she was trying to do and uh, split us up for that night, fortunately. But I knew at that point, it was a dangerous situation. When someone that you're married to tries to have you thrown in jail for a logical person, for a logical person, it just hard for us to understand that. Yeah. It well, really, it's really is. No, it's not, not it's, no, it's, no. it's, it's, it's but really, what they right. Yeah. They don't care at that point. Situation. Yeah. Anyway. The things that what I had to pay her just to leave, it was basically extortion. But again, no kids, no violence, none of that. And only married for six months, you would think you just go your one way, you go the other. That's the way it should be, but not in a narcissist. They want to take as much from you as they can. And then, of course, move on to the next victim once they drain you dry. That's what happened with me, Greg. And it, it was really devastating for me at that point in my life. I was self-employed at a business that I was trying to run and operate. And at the same time, dealing with this in my own home, I, I'd come home from a stressful day at work and have to walk around on eggshells in my own house with this woman that was so volatile. And, 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 and it was just really a disappointing uh, time in my life. And the hardest part, Greg, was overcoming the regrets that I had. Once I finally got rid of this person, it took me several years to forgive myself. 
And, and that's what one, one of the things that we really do, Greg, and we really focus on is helping people recover from the abuse. It's like any other type of abuse that your body goes through, whatever type of trauma. We love coaching people on recovery, how to recover, because we both have recovered and, and found each other and moved on and created this business. It's been amazing. And we knew the mistakes that we made. Right. So it's take a step back and don't make that mistake. It's like we the whole program is our hindsight. Right. We would have had this playbook. We would not have right. been addicted to all of these things. Credit fraud, just right. financial. So, so really. Eddie, but but again, the recovery, I love coaching recovery. And and we have a great eight-week uh, group coaching uh, that, that, that really helps walk people through stages and things they need to do on a daily basis to recover. You're going to recover eventually. You want it to spend, take five years or you want it to take eight weeks. W what do you want to, how quickly do you want to recover from this and move on with your life? And so well, both of us are very passionate about recovery. Melissa is phenomenal with helping people when they're involved in trying to leave, like they're in the divorce situation and really struggling with or representation or mediation or those types of issues. She's phenomenal with that. But together, we really do a nice job with helping people to recover. And we find uh, there's literally millions of folks on the planet. Uh, we, our business is global now. And it, there's so many people all over the planet that are suffering because they've been abused financially, emotionally, physically. And so we love to coach them and help them to recover as quickly as possible and reclaim their lives. Yeah. And rebuild everything from yeah. scratch, financially, yeah. mentally, physically, all of it. I think that's so important. And I'm, I'm going to ask you. Do you see a tendency when someone gets out of a relationship with a narcissist to go find another one? And absolutely. Because they don't heal properly. Right. Um, they, 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 they go right back. In, um, and so they're hurt and yeah. they're desperate and they're lonely and they've been isolated. So they want that companion. They're, they need to be alone. Right, right. You know, they're actually dumping on someone else. And that person could be perfectly normal, but it's not fair to that person either. Right. You know, so we always, that's part of our recovery. It's like, let's, let's recover first before you yeah. go out. My pa our pastor at our previous church, um, Andy Stanley, used to always say, become the person that you're looking for is looking for. Yeah. You've got to heal and become stronger and more self-confident in yourself to find that right mate in the, in the future. We're humans. We, we want compatibility. That's what we're designed for. And when people get out of relationships, sometimes they rebound and go right back into a horrible situation because they think that's going to fix them and, and, f and fill the, the hole, this gap. We all know that has to be something you do on your own. Yeah. And, and we believe that with the help of our creator, that that hole can be filled, yeah. but it takes work yeah. and it takes daily activity. And we love coaching that. Yeah. We do. We do. We want people to love themselves again. We want them yeah. to get their life back. Right. Yeah. So we are very passionate about that. That's, it's interesting. I just finished a book. Uh, my mentor gave me years ago. Oh, he, he's been a mentor for years, but he gave it to me a couple of weeks ago. And it was called uh, Missing Commandment, Love Thyself. And oh, that, yeah. yeah. Really great book. Oh, How so can you love great. others if you don't love yourself first? And exactly. What I imagine in what I've seen is people who are in there uh, actually have such self-loathing and uh, uh, shaming of themselves for doing that in the first place. Yeah. And that's no way to live and you're not going to be able to move on. You've got to first forgive yourself. And yeah. then I think at some point, you, when you forgive yourself, you're able to forgive the whole situation and let yeah. It, yeah. put it behind you, let it go. And uh, I, I love the work you're doing because it's so specific and it's needed. I think that every person who uh, is, is, as you already know, by the millions of clicks you get and uh, people engaging, reaching out to you, it's a, uh, it's a mission that I, I believe uh, is really needed. So thank you both for being on this show. Thank you for sharing what it is. I'd love to hear more in the future. I'd love to have you back on at another point and talk about maybe how you've grown and uh, some of the lives that have changed along the way, because we only have about 30 minutes, but uh, I really love the baseline you've given us for looking at that. And folks, please go uh, to the Victim to Warrior, their organization. We're gonna, if you have any doubt, reach out to, uh, reach out to John and Melissa. I'm sure they'd be willing to help you and direct you. And really appreciate you being on the show today. 
And everyone, thank you for being with us. Really enjoyed it. Thank you so much for having us. Thanks so much. And if you'll like and subscribe, really appreciate it. But we'll see you next time on A Shout of Inspiration. Thanks so much for being with us. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to this episode of A Shout of Inspiration. If you like this or any of our other episodes, make sure you rate it and share it with a friend. This is Greg Stevens, and we look forward to being with you next time. Until then, be bold, be courageous, and respectfully speak your truth.